No, Pat Elder. Oh. 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 Good morning. I don't I can hear you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the fifth Sunday in Lent. We're uh, we're getting we're getting close, y'all. Oh yes. <laughs> getting close to Easter. Uh, so a couple of announcements for today. I don't know if I don't know if anybody saw this. I thought it was interesting. The Cincinnati Arts Association has um, right now they have an online stream of this program called Lena, a moment with a lady. Uh, it's celebrating the life and legacy of Lena Horn. Wow. And wow. that is so if you go to the Cincinnati Arts Association, actually, I'll, I'll drop this in the chat in a little bit and I'll make sure it's in the email later. But you can um, you can watch either just the um, the program, which is done by Cindy Winter. She was in um, she was in Hamilton, mm -hmm. so she plays Lena Horn, and, and it's kind of like a monologue and singing along. But she, there, she will also be doing a conversation on March twenty fourth at seven thirty p.m. and that will be live. So to just stream the thing from the since the the. Um, program from the Cincinnati Arts Association is six dollars and you can just do that all online if you want to do the conversation and stream the um, program it's ten dollars so I thought that's a pretty reasonable price um, and I thought folks might be interested in that um, after Easter the uh, the the uh, violin duo black violin will be doing a similar thing so I'll, I'll, I'll keep you apprised of that also those guys are amazing as well Great. Um, for things that are happening within our diocese, uh, just a reminder that there will be a good Friday, Friday choral even song with the cathedral. And that'll be on April 2nd at 7 p.m. I'm sure that will be beautiful. That will be free. And uh, that'll be the link to that. I'll put in the email as well. And that's just the cathedral's normal um, live stream. Uh, we'd like to say thank you to the uh, Bellarmine Chapel and all our St. Andrews volunteers who helped with spring cleanup yesterday. Um, I've, I've heard, I, I was in Indianapolis yesterday, so I wasn't able to go, but I've heard that it was amazing. They did 21 bags of spring cleanup from the, from, uh, the garden areas at the church. Mm. Uh, a lot of you have actually done this already, and I'll put this up uh, again as well, but uh, I'm working on the attendance for the parochial report, and all I all I need from from everybody is to make sure that you go and do this doodle poll. It's just one question: when you come to online worship services, uh, how many people watch from your screen with you? Uh, and that'll help me put together an algorithm to to um, take the views that we have on YouTube and then make it more accurate um, count of how many people actually watch the service. So that would be really helpful. And then the last announcement is, uh, I just wanna make sure everybody sees the Holy Week schedule. I know it's been in emails, but I just want everybody to see it uh, this morning. So the dates and times, Palm Sunday, which is next Sunday, will be 10 a.m. We'll have music beforehand, like we, like we did today. Monday, Thursday, 6.30 p.m., we, if, if we go into the orange this Thursday, if the county goes to orange, we'll do that in person. If the county remains in red this Thursday, then we'll be doing all of Holy Week uh, on Zoom. So let's all cross our fingers and pray that we go into orange. We can, we can spend Easter Sunday together at church. So that's, what, that's my prayer anyway for this week. Uh, Good Friday will be noon, and Easter Sunday will be 10 a.m., and we'll have music on Easter Sunday before the service as well. So those are the announcements for this week. And now let us prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship the Lord our God. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy and grace forever. forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you 
and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 sees a new covenant between God and the people who he loves. This covenant will be marked by the Lord's Spirit in their hearts rather than on tablets of stone. The first reading according to Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 51. Chapters 1 through 13 from the Book of Common Prayer, beginning and ending with the refrain. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Have mercy on me, Amen. O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. And cleanse me from, me from, my, from us. Yeah. I know my transgressions, and my sin is never before me. me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is done what is evil in your sight. Justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's You look for truth deep within me and will make me understand your sin secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me, wash me, and I shall be clean. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken for me. Hide your face from my sins and blot out your iniquities. Gave in me a clean heart, O God, and renew my right spirit. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your spirit from me. Be the joy of your saving help again. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Amen. Through obedience and suffering, Jesus opened the gates of the kingdom. He is named High Priest forever. The second reading, according to Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. 
In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And do you want to read this or do you, would you like to do? I'll do it. I forgot to unmute. Sorry. <laughs> the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Like that, so I can see everybody. Put y'all on gallery view here. Well, it's so great to be with you again this morning and to reflect on these scriptures this final Sunday in regular Lent before we hit and in, head into Holy Week. A, these scriptures called to mind some time that I spent uh, my years in Baltimore. And when I lived in Baltimore, one of my uh, one of the ministries that I had was um, hanging out with uh, an organization called the Cathedral Reentry Program. And the Cathedral Reentry Program was founded by Episcopal an Episcopal Ministry Organization, and its goal was to help men and women who were living in recovery from addictions to drugs and alcohol and striving to re-enter society after they'd been either in jail or just had very long time bouts of the disease that they could um, come back and find a way to re-engage uh, society in healthier ways. And this group met every day. Um, I wouldn't go every day, but I would go a couple days a week. And every day when the group gathered, um, we would begin with an aphorism, a word of inspiration from some um, famous person or some um, biblical quote, or it could be just something that some pithy thing, a random person had said along the way. And the, the aphorisms would open our time together and we'd say, well, what did that mean? What, does, what do those words mean? What do they mean for me as a person? How do I relate to these words? Um, and, and are they meaningful for me? And why aren't they meaningful? Kind of get your brain going, you know? And then um, 
And then they would have, uh, there would be an AA Al-Anon meeting from which I was excused. And then after the AA and Al-Anon meeting, the, um, they'd ex we'd explore topics of importance that would help people navigate their way through life without, the, without chemicals. Um, we had pastoral counseling, we had employee assistance, but the whole purpose of the program was to give participants a chance to transform their lives, to live without dependence on drugs or alcohol um, that of course had caused a great deal of pain and separation in their families and to change their lives from the inside out. They wanted to, these folks wanted to live differently. They wanted to make a new way. They wanted to start afresh. And so we partnered with them to give them some tools to help them do that. There's a little blue book of Alcoholics Anonymous. There's a couple of them, but in the, the one I'm referring to, um, the 12 steps in AA are described as a group of principles, spiritual in their nature, which if practiced as a way of life, can expel the obsession to drink and enable the sufferer to become happily and usefully whole. It goes on to say that AA's 12 traditions apply to the life of the fellowship itself. They outline the means by which AA maintains its unity and relates itself to the world about it, the way it lives and grows. These two little phrases sum up what it means to live a transformed life, to be able to expel obsessions, to focus, to be usefully whole, and to engage in a community of fellowship that relates itself to the world and to its neighbors in ways where people can thrive and can grow. I think it's easy for us who have not, who, some of us who maybe have not struggled with addiction to look at those who have and say, oh, that's amazing how people have turned their lives around and, and we can see that transformation in their life. What they have to go through to maintain that path, to stay on that path of transformation takes a huge commitment of time, energy, and intention. Because for some people, one drink, one, one moment of straying can send them spiraling out of control again and they have to start all over. Folks in recovery know that it takes a singular dedication, single-mindedness to stay on the path to health and wholeness. That transformation happens every day when they wake up and they say, today is a new day and I'm gonna commit myself to these, this way of being. They start every day over and over again. You and I may not um, have the experience of chemical or, or um, addiction of any kind, but we um, do know that we have practices and habits and things that form themselves in a kind of addiction. And when we were, when I was working with the folks in Baltimore, I realized for myself that things that aren't necessarily um, physically harmful or um, have the capacity to create other kinds of harms because they might distract me from being present to people. Things like, um, I, have, I have a little addiction to television. I have a little addiction to old movies. And once I start watching, I'm like, stay out of my way. Okay, just be, stay away from me because I'm in my zone and I'm watching and I'm doing what I wanna do. You know, we all may have these things that keep us so focused on ourselves and on what we wanna be about that we lose sight of where God is. We lose sight of where our neighbor is and we lose sight of the best that's in us. And it takes an honest assessment of ourselves to uncover what these little addictions are that we may carry. The people of Israel and Judah were not that different from us. They had made a covenant with God. God had made a covenant with them. And because of their addictions, their desires to control their destiny, to be self-determined, to to that their 
desire to respond in fear rather than in trust, they broke that first covenant. Remember the tablets were broken because the people of Israel were in the wilderness, got, were afraid and they made the golden calf because they needed to see God. So over the years, over many generations, this happened time and time again. They would, that God would make the covenant with them and they would break their, their part of the promise. And then God, they would cry out to God and God would restore the covenant. And it was all, the covenant of Moses was based on the common experience that they had of, of coming out of exile together. Of, of having been in Egypt and wandered in the wilderness and, and having to strive and survive among different cultures. But at a certain point, the, the people of Israel and Judah were sent into exile in Babylon. And Jeremiah, whom we heard, from whom we heard today, was the prophet who spoke to the people um, as they were still in exile. Because every time they, the people felt they were at rock bottom, they cried out to God. And they were like, yes, yes, we will renew our covenant. But today, Jeremiah says that the covenant that Moses made, which had been broken, would be made differently. It was a covenant that would be written on their hearts. It would not be something external based on a transaction that if you follow me, then I will make sure that you're safe and whole, but rather that it would be internal. It would be written on the hearts of God's people in such a way that they wouldn't need to be reminded about it from the outside, that their commitment to God and God's commitment to them for God's love for them would be known forever, regardless of where they were, regardless of, of the circumstances in which they found themselves. In Hebrew, the words, the words that are used for I will make, like I will make a covenant, is I will cut a covenant. Covenants were often made by um, putting an sacrificial animals on two sides and the partners of the covenant walking between the sacrificial, the sacrificed animals. But the covenant that Jeremiah spoke to be was to be cut into the hearts of the people. So no matter where they were, whatever tribal configuration they found themselves in, whatever geography they found themselves in, that covenant would be cut into their heart. And they would be so committed to it that the law of God would be upheld in their daily lives. They would be changed from the inside out. We know that in our human condition, that although we make these promises and although the people of God made those promises, it was difficult for them to continually be true to their side. So we hear the words of the psalmist, have mercy on me, O God, as befits your faithfulness in keeping with your abundant compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly of my iniquity and purify me of my sin, for I recognize my transgressions and am ever conscious of my sin. The people of Israel were transformed in a new way when God wrote the covenant in their hearts, but they needed to confess every, when they failed that they weren't always able to sustain their side of the commitment. And so they lamented and they prayed and they confessed their sin. And they asked God, fashion me a pure heart, O God. Create in me a steadfast spirit. Do not cast me out of your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. They wanted a new start every day. So in Jesus' day, by the time Jesus came along, there were people who were Jewish who were all over the world in the ancient world. And so the Greeks who came to Jesus were probably Greek, uh, Gentile believers of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
and they were in the city to celebrate the Passover along with everybody else. Chances were good that they didn't come to Jerusalem very often, but that that week, Jesus had been pretty busy because he'd raised Lazarus from the tomb. He'd thrown out the money changers from the temple. And then he'd been ridden into to the city of Jerusalem from Bethany on a donkey with people shouting Hosanna. You probably couldn't be in Jerusalem without hearing a little scuttlebutt about all this activity that Jesus was doing that week. So the Greeks who were interested and curious people and were always looking after, after truth came to, to Philip and said, we really would like to meet this guy. We'd like to see who this Jesus is. And so Jesus in response to the invitation kind of summarizes what's gonna happen to him and gives them an indication that, you know, things are gonna change here and my future isn't very much longer for this world, but God will be glorified. In John's gospel, we meet people from all walks of life, from all corners of the globe, who become followers of Jesus and who are open to God's blessing. What Jesus had to offer was a new way of looking at the world. His future was destined to transform the understanding of what it meant to be connected and aligned with God. In the um, translation, the message, the, the um, paraphrase, the message um, Bible, it says, unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never any more than a grain of wheat. But if it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over. In the same way, anyone who holds on to life just as it is, destroys that life. But if you let it go, reckless in your love, you'll have it forever, real and eternal. To have God's covenant written on your heart meant that abandoning self-centeredness and claiming self-sacrifice would change disciples from the inside out. It's like the seed that when planted takes on new life. If that, if that covenant is planted in your heart, it takes on new life. In today's world, we struggle to know when self-sacrifice self is healthy and when it isn't, to discern when it's time to let go and let God or when it's time to take responsibility for, for our actions. It's a dance we do all the time. We can only do it effectively when we have God's love and God's law written in our hearts, that it's so much a part of us that it becomes the plumb line or the reference point for every decision and every action we take. Some years ago, people would have little bracelets that they would wear that say WWJD, what would Jesus do? That would sometimes, some of us need external reminders because what's inside of us sometimes isn't always readily apparent. Just like our friends in AA, being dedicated to living and loving as God would have us do takes intentionality and practice and a willingness to start every day brand new. We need to renew that covenant that we carry. We need to admit when we get it wrong and we need to pray for God's forgiveness. The promise of Jesus is that we are all worthy to receive God's love, that that covenant can be written on the heart of all of us. And if we accept it, if we accept that love, then we become bearers of the covenant and the love that is written, that God has written on our hearts. And then each day we begin again from the inside out. And each day we can say, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Will you please join me in professing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed? We believe in one we God, one God, Father, Father the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. unseen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally to God, Father, God from God, light from the light, true God from true God. We got God made one being with the Father. Through him all things are made for us and for our salvation. He came down down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. Ever since he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. Third day he rose again, according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again and raise the judge to living in the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, life, who proceeds from the Father, and the Son, with the Father, and the Son, and the Lord, 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 and the And we pray the words that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. You remember especially our bishops. You remember Bishop Curry, Bishop Ken, Bishop Nettie, Bishop Tom, and our clergy, and all those who confess God's name. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We remember especially our legislators, president, governor, and all those who serve in public office. Lord, in your mercy. Give us all the reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We remember especially those in the military, law enforcement agencies and fire department, EMT specialists and all frontline workers and first, uh, first responders who are being present to us in this pandemic, especially Tyrone Hall Jr., Darren Hall, Ernest R.J. Harris, James A.S. Harris, and Brian Hurd. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray today for Harry Turnage, Christopher Garrison, Andra Surratt, 
Tate and Ann Greenwald, Jeannie Hayes, George and Rosetta Hall, Susan Gordon, Gail Davis, Gail Jackson, Vicki Washington, Susan Shackelford, Joseph Meyer, Alan Harris, Karen Barber, Donna Rogers, Charlotte and Robert Wilson, four administrators of the COVID-19 vaccine distributions, healthcare professionals, and for all St. Andrews members who need healing. And we remember those who are in retirement communities, nursing homes and medical care facilities, especially Crane Glanton, Eleanor Bonner, Jeannie Hayes, and Marjorie Parham and others who are on our hearts and minds this morning. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We remember especially those who died in Georgia this week, as a result of racist acts. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, I'd like to give special thanks for a new nephew of mine that was born, Lopaka O Kamea Kuikahe. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful, most merciful God, God, we confess, we confess that, that we have sinned against you. So by what we have done, we have not done. We have we not loved you with our own hearts. Heart. We have we not loved our neighbor and ourselves. ourselves. We are truly, truly sorry, sorry and we humbly humble repent. For the sake, the sake of your, your son, Jesus Christ, Christ. Christ. have mercy on us and forgive us, us, that we may delight in your new will, walk and in your new ways, for the glory of your name. Amen. 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 Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And also with you. Peace, Peace of the Lord, everyone. Peace, Peace everyone. Peace. 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 Peace to my little one. Peace, Peace everyone. Peace. Christian to say peace. Peace. Good morning, Kathy. Oh. Please. Good morning, Matt. Peace There's the man. Me. Hey, Don. Hey. How you doing? <laughs> Wrong, Don. Hey. Thanks for the word, Ann. <laughs> I see two. Right here. You're right here. Okay. Yeah. Can you say peace? Can you say peace of the Lord? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> he got out of there quick. <laughs> he put him on the spot, so he left. <laughs> that's okay. We saw his beautiful eyes, and that's peace. Yeah. <laughs> so, Father, you said your nephew. Where was your nephew born? And explain us the origin of the name. So, my my nephew, my oldest brother, um, Keola. He, um, he and his wife had their, their second child. She's, she had two before they got married, but they've had their second child together. Uh, the first one is uh, um, Kaleo and, um, and his name, his name means the voice mm -hmm. and Lopaka, he's named after my grandma, Robert. That's how you say Robert in Hawaiian. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and uh, Okamea Kuikahe means uh, man of harmony. Oh, wow. Uh, nice. So, he, so mm -hmm. my other brother, so we went with Greek names in our family because Melanie's Greek. And my, my older brother um, was talking to our, um, one of our uncles in Hawaii, uncle and auntie are, are kind of just anybody in the generation above you. So, one of our uncles 
Um, Uncle Roy, he is a native Hawaiian and he and Keola have been talking every time Keola has uh, the last, the babies that they've had, he talks to Uncle Roy, who's a, a minister, a Hawaiian minister, and they come up with a name together and he helped. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, so it's one of our connections that is still to the island, so. That's cool. That's awesome, Father. So he's a beautiful little baby boy. And thank you all for, for your prayers. Thank you. All right. So now we, we're about to move into the uh, our musical offering to the day. And this is just a reminder. And I'll, I'll let maybe Lee say something um, to, to um, make sure that you honor your pledge. And if you haven't pledged yet, to make a pledge and or, or to just make sure that you're contributing to the financial health of, of the church. Yes, I, I totally agree. And for those who use the online uh, platform to submit your um, pledge money, um, the diocese is going to a new platform as of April 1st. So we'll be sending out information for those. We have about five or six people that consistently use that. So we'll be sending out information so you understand what the new process is. Thanks. And our musical offering, When Christ Was Lifted from the Earth, uh, sung by Myra Page. Let us say together a general thanksgiving. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and, our thanks and praise, praise for all, all that you have done, done for, for us. us. We, we thank, thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, creation for the beauty of this world, world for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank, you. thank you for the blessing of family, family and friends and, and for care the loving care which around us on every, every side. side. We thank you for, we thank you for setting us at times to demand our best and efforts and for leading us to a compromise to satisfy and delight. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Thank you. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, 
for the truth of his word and the example of his life. That's as temptation, for his dying, in which he overcame death, for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of the Spirit that we may know him may know him, him known, and make him known and through him and through all him time, at all times time, and in all places may give thanks, give thanks to you, to you in, all in, things. in all things amen amen, amen. amen. Mm. may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of god and of his son jesus christ our lord and may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you into the ages of ages. Amen. 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 Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thanks, Father and Anne. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thanks, Father. Good to see you. Thank you, Anne. Before and, everybody jumps up, Pam, could I ask you to help me? This is Tweedle. I had a, oh. oh. Sorry, go ahead, Tweedle. I had a quick question. Go ahead. Because I didn't have my pencil and paper to write it down. Yeah. You said, create in me a clean heart and renew, and it was a something right. about the spirit, a right. spirit with a right, <laughs> right like R I G H T. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Just wanted to add that to my prayers. All right. <laughs> and and a renew right a right spirit within me. A right. Okay. Got it. A right spirit. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Go ahead. Within me. This is uh, Leroy or Father. So I saw that Palm Sunday service is at 10 a.m. Yes, Will that yes. definitely be in Zoom live Zoom meeting on that Palm Sunday? That will definitely be that'll definitely be in Zoom. Yes. Okay. Thanks, because I'll notify my readers then. Thank you. If we yeah. do if we do in person service uh, for Easter or for the end of Holy Week, if the um, if the county goes orange this Thursday, then even if we do in person service, we are going to figure it out so that we can also live stream on Zoom like we're doing right now. For anybody who doesn't feel comfortable coming into the building right thank you so that so don't worry about that we'll set up the computer so that it's looking at the readers and and looking at the altar and so that you'll be able and and we'll just have to mess with it a little bit but we should be able to work it out to where you'll be able to hear and anybody who's a reader um this doesn't for, for our passion play for palm sunday we're obviously going to do that on zoom so it's not a problem but for anybody who's a reader who doesn't want to be there, we can make, we can we're gonna work on that to make that work also. So that you yeah. can do Zoom if you're, if you're a reader for any of the Holy Week. Yep. Uh, one, question I, one question I have for, for you all before, before you go, um, we're working on a project for the Stations of the Cross for the diocese. And what I'm hoping to do is I've signed, I've signed us up for the, station where Jesus has his clothes stripped from him. And I'm hoping to have one of our youth respond to, uh, to something that we say here. And what, I, what I'm asking is I'm gonna send this response to, to one of our youth and see if they'll um, give us a short video response. And what I was wondering about is for anybody who is here or anybody who has knowledge, of what it was like when the church moved from the West End to the current location. Because mm -hmm. I think it would be good for, I, I don't know if our youth know that story, maybe they do, but I think it would be good to share that story with the youth of our church and with the diocese, because I definitely know that the diocese doesn't know how that happened. So if anybody would be willing to share, um, I'd love to hear that and I'd love to be able to share that. I don't know how that happened either. I'd like to know that as well. I would too. 75. 
I know the elders would know because I've heard stories from Eleanor and other people mm -hmm. about all the things being lost, mm -hmm. all the things of the church. I think even records mm -hmm. were mm -hmm. lost, like baptismal records. And I don't think anybody saw it happen. They just know that suddenly nothing was there. Mm. Father, when did it happen? Uh, what About what year? Does anyone know that? Was, I think it was 57, 58 months. 56, 7, 8, maybe, or so. Okay, so it's only, again, it's Mary Carroll says, our, our older members mm -hmm. who yes. would have been teen, maybe teenagers at the time. Yeah, Mom and, and I, Pop. I can't offer too much because I didn't become a part of the congregation until around 1960 myself, so I don't know. And Mary, did it go directly from the West End to Rutland? Or was there an intermediary church? Well, to my recollection, we stopped gathering in, uh, uh, at the, that church. And when I became active, they were meeting at the chapel at the cathedral, which was still Christ Church at that point. And uh, they were gathering for service there. And Pat, uh, Pat Elder, you might remember a little bit more because you were an active member. I just remember that we were at the chapel. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. Of Christ Church. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And that was for a, a, over a year. Yes. So we're getting the hey, Rutland can, address hey, ready because it was yes. a Baptist church. We you check with Miss, you know, probably, check with Miss, probably check with Miss Parham. Also, our church history is written up. It, it's been published when we celebrated our church's anniversary at Xavier University. So if you have a copy of that publication, the history is printed up. So it's in the archives somewhere. The history of how we started, where we moved from, and where we are today. Yeah. So it's published. I think Father's question is more of the motivation um, and, and also... Um, some of those details that may not be in that published history, mm. which some of the only right. members would know. Mm -hmm. Right. Isn't, isn't there a bit of a YouTube video out there too mm -hmm. that I came across? Uh, I remember seeing that back uh, as part of the 120th. There was it a YouTube been, video um, on the St. Trent on the St. Andrews um, channel. Yeah, that would have been uh, Dr. Taylor, and Stephanie, it's Taylor. It's Stephanie Taylor. Put that together. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe, yeah, so maybe if I can, if I can find that video, if anybody has a link to that and would send it. My understanding was, uh, this is my understanding from, I think Jason Leo told me this, is that, well, first of all, that the first church was built um, by folks collecting cans and stuff and, and recycling cans and, and I don't know how accurate that is but then my other understanding is that the church the bishop told the parish to move because they were trying to build I-75 mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah and so the church that wasn't given a choice but was told you are moving we're going to buy you a building yeah my father could tell you completely if he was still here. Mm. Uh, Father, I was very involved during that time. Uh, probably I was 14 mm -hmm. um, because, you know, Father Oxley was my step-grandfather and all that. But through the years, a old age has robbed me <laughs> of all, <laughs> all of my great, great, great memories. And I mean, I... Uh, the congregation knows I absolutely was born into St. Andrews. Uh, but I'm sitting here going, yeah, you, yeah, it's somewhere in there. And the, the little bit of brain that I still had, this pandemic wiped it out. <laughs> it has wiped it out. Uh, but I remember it, it, oh, I just remember St. Andrew's Church downtown being magnificent. It was. Um, just met with those big 
what are they called? Pipe organ? Uh, what are those organs? I mean, uh, uh, whatever those things. Uh, oh my gosh, it was glorious. And um, the stained glass windows. And yes, all yeah. stained glass windows everywhere. It was just magnificent. And then there was a candy store uh, <laughs> di diagonal from it. And if you were good in church, you got a dime <laughs> to get some candy. So that's what talking about yeah. that's the real stuff. That's what I remember, Ann. I yeah, know. going to uh, right diagonal to church uh -huh, and penny candy. <laughs> Mary, so there. Guido, did did the church uh, was it a community church from the West End, or did it draw people from? from beyond you, other neighborhoods you know it it drew us mm -hmm. like you know many of the congregation the older ones that are still with us us mm -hmm. really not and this is so strange really not a lot of neighborhood people okay and um unfortunately uh saint andrews had and some of you know this, a certain reputation. Mm -hmm. yes. Of wealthy, uh, wealthy <laughs> African-Americans? Uh, there was just a reputation that the people that went to St. Andrews were, oh, what's a just nice say word? A little, just say a little different. Uh, Mary, you can help me out. I'm struggling well, with a, I'm struggling is. with a nice word. But back then, seriously, it again, Tyrone. Aristocrats. Uh, uh, that's a nice word, and then another word is just uppity. Oh, uh, I mean, that's just, Mary Williams knows what I'm talking about. Tyrone, I mean, really, and it's unfortunately, it's unfortunate because I don't real, I don't remember us being uppity or aristocratic, but that's kind of the reputation and it, it you know, reputations. So um, I heard that when I came to this, before I came to this diocese, actually. Thank you, Anne. Oh, so it still <laughs> exists then. <laughs> you know, when I first moved to Cincinnati, uh, I was asked what church did I go to? And I told them St. Andrews and somebody in our crowd said, I could have figured that out. <laughs> oh. And I, I never knew what they, this was back in early 80s. I never knew what that, even to this day, I never knew what that meant. Uh, but I found out later that it was supposed to be all of the, lack of a better term, all of the big shots went to St. Right. Andrew. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I said, well, how did I get in there? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. You're right, guys. You're right. Now, I have so. to admit, with growing up, um, I didn't come to St. Andrews till the 70s. And I have to admit, with me growing up from the 70s and 80s in St. Andrews, by then I didn't under I didn't realize that perception either. I found out from um, older, uh, more mature individuals who had been around a while that um, it, I did I just didn't realize it had that reputation either. Uh. So it, it, at some point, it I believe it changed. <laughs> But I also have heard remnants of, um, of that as well. And you know, Natalie, it has changed. It has. Being, being, uh, being head usher and, mm -hmm. you know, people coming in from the neighborhood to join mm -hmm. us in service, I right. always hear as they leave how warm and welcoming we were and how they felt very good about coming back. So right. yeah, uh, a lot of that we all worked on mm -hmm. so that that reputation wouldn't linger. Because right. now if you ask anyone from 
the neighborhood or, you know, that's busy. They all say the same thing. Oh, you all are so warm and welcoming. And that, that just feels so good. Mm -hmm. So I, I, have, I have to say this. Uh, I did tell that person who said they, they could figure out what church I attended. I had to let them know that I had been an Episcopalian since I was five that's or six right. years old. So I just found this church. But I would say this. Over the years, a lot of the people that they were referring to had been the big shots when they passed away. And I really didn't know them. I saw them every Sunday, or at least the Sundays that I attended church and talked with them after church like we're doing now and all that. Uh, but when a lot of them start passing away in the 90s and 2000s or whatever, and I was sitting there reading their obituaries at church at their funeral and never knew that that person did that, work there that way yeah. had to take a position they never ever told bragged about it, if you want to use that word about who, what they did every day they were just people who came together on a sunday had a great time so on the next sunday uh but there were some giants uh at saint andrew some very powerful people and i said well i did find the right church when i moved here <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where you belong isn't that amazing how you can how you can know somebody who who is a, in the world, uh, who's, who's a powerful person, and yet you know the power of their faith more than you know their power in the world. Mm. Yes, yeah. yes. That's, exactly. that's beautiful. What that's a Don beautiful way said, to put that. What Mr. Washington just said is so true, though. I mean, we, to this day, we have legends. Look at Judge Yates. Uh, you know, when, when you look at Marjorie Parr, you look at um, a number of different people in our church that have touched so many lives outside of our church through their careers. And since uh, St. Andrews has had just a story tradition mm -hmm. and I, my mom and, and, and Ms. Tweedle and others know, um, and I'm sure some of and, and father didn't bear with me because uh, my father was one of the reasons why we are at St. Andrews because he was- The only working. reason. <laughs> 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 we had a gas station. The family had a gas station down the street from Ninth and Mount. And so one of the reasons my grandfather uh, wanted us to, uh, my father to go there was because one, he wanted the clientele, but two, uh, my father was, was had been struck through someone who got the Holy Ghost on a Baptist Sunday as a child and hit him and basically scared him so bad. He's like, I can't go back to church. Again. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so we ended up at St. Andrews there on Ninth and Mound. And then I believe we, my mom and dad were the, one of the first couples to be married in that building on and Rutland. The, and on Rutland, right. I shared that story with you, Father, when we lost Jim. Um, but it, it, um, it was just that one of the first dates that we had as young adults, and I had met, known him very long, but that was one of the first dates that he invited me on with him. And that kind of impressed me, and so much so that he was stuck with me for over 60 years. <laughs> uh, but it, it was true. Um, and there was a lot of scrutiny. I, when I first decided that I did want to become a part of that after our dating for about two and a half years, and we decided to marry, I was scrutinized once I did consider myself a part of the congregation there, so much so that some of the older high caliber folk wanted to know who was I and who was my family and all of that. And I said, you don't know my family. And oh yes, we know everybody, we know everybody. And so when I gave them my maiden name, it was shaking head. we don't know them. I said, I told you, <laughs> <laughs> but it was okay. It didn't matter because we weren't there to be recognized. We were there to learn and become a part of the fiber of what we are now. So, yeah. and I would be eternally grateful for that. You turned, o you turned over that uh, money changing table for him real quick. <laughs> true true beautiful story mary all right well love to you all and thank you for sharing i, I love this kind of stuff i think it's good yep. to talk about we don't talk about this kind of stuff enough when we lose our history when we don't talk about it yeah absolutely and, thanks father have a great fun. sunday everyone thank, thank you, you father thank you, thank you. Bye. bye everybody bye. 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 everyone have a good sunday